First we have Mike Knorr from Grand Rapids CMC. We've seen him before at the conference a few years ago, which was awesome, so thank you for coming, Mike. Elizabeth Lord, who doesn't know Elizabeth, our Central States Region Chair, yeah. right? From, <laughs> from Access Fort Wayne, and Chris Weagle from CMN TV in Troy. So Chris is doing a lot of cool things in Detroit, too, that you will talk about. So I will let them introduce themselves, and then we'll kind of go from there. Oh no. <laughs> so we're talking about internet on demand stuff and that we're all struggling with the internet here. Um, yeah, uh, so you got a Chrome. Short introduction. Um, I've been at uh, CMC in Grand Rapids for two years. Um, kind of come from more of a creative background. It's been a trip getting to know all the tech people. It's, uh, feel like a, I feel like an outsider sometimes, but that's starting to that's starting to you know, actually, I thought that was a good thing at first, and I still do that. Um, like, uh, <laughs> um, and, and I'm not saying I feel like an outsider in the group. I feel like I'm an outsider to uh, the uh, overall kind of history of tech programming um, and why I thought that was a good thing when I came in uh, was uh, just as a sense of kind of perspective, like coming in with a new perspective. Um, definitely a, a design and aesthetic perspective, um, and and that's where I, that's where I felt like that really helped me out in my position now. So uh, in the last few years, uh, since I've been at uh, uh, GRTV, part of Grand Rapids Community Media Center, um, really been focusing on trying to uh, find better and smarter and easier ways to uh, integrate video uh, production stuff that we do into kind of the, the places where people actually reside when they interact with media. Um, and, you know, oftentimes that really is Facebook and things like that, and trying to find ways to plug into where people actually go to find their media. Um, and ways to help people who come to, you, to use our services in an educational sense understand that and, and uh, get themselves set up and to distribute the media as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, not a whole lot, but we'll get to... Uh, do you want me to introduce this project sure. now, or do yeah, you want yeah. to go back to all of that stuff? Um, we can introduce it if you want, and we'll go more in depth. Okay. Yeah, yeah so anyway, um, this, uh, this project here, Songs from the Second Floor, is... Uh, one of the unique things about the CMC is that we kind of uh, we've collected such a diverse uh, media range. Um, we've got the, you know our, our historic theater, a radio station, a TV station. We've got all these media types that are interconnected, and uh, there was a you know and that's been great. But one thing that's even though we're all connected under the same umbrella, sometimes we still get kind of insular in our thinking. And uh, this was a case where I saw what the radio station was doing. Um, and they were having all these really great people come in and play on, you know, like, every one of these people have played in Grand Rapids, and they come in for 10 minutes to the radio station to say, hey guys, we're playing at such and such a place tonight, um, come check out our show. And there's all these cool bands that are playing in this tiny little room up in the office, and, uh, I decided, you know, like, what about like this really great collaborative project since we have all this talent in the building and we're just letting all this uh, cool stuff just slip right through our door. And so we started collecting um, video of all of these in-studio performances. And, uh, and honestly, that had been done for years, but it just didn't feel like it because it was never done cohesively. It was never done intentionally. Um, and uh, and so we really looked at it as a, as a project. Um, I kind of looked at it from an art director standpoint um, and said, let's, if we collect this, give it all kind of its own character, keep it consistent, and let it build into its own thing instead of a lot of collected and disparate uh, moments, um, the impact will be greater and greater. So on the site live right now, we, I think we have 47 songs. Um, 
we just launched it a few months ago, um, and it's growing fast. We've got probably another 20 recorded that we just haven't had time to edit yet. So. <laughs> but um, where I think this is important from my perspective in terms of video on demand is, like I said, trying to find ways to, to connect with people where they would naturally go for the media. Um, it's, you know, to me, one thing to have the ability to have your, your content online. It's another thing to put it in the right spot online. Um, I don't necessarily, from my opinion, think that, you know, everything produced by a station should all go on the same website, the same spot, and you have all these different things with, like, a, all these different characters, and they're all aimed at different uh, audiences, and they're all in one spot. Um, and so this is kind of like taking things that are related. This one, it's all like a tight relationship between these pieces, but putting it into its own frame where it looks best and giving people who are interested specifically in this kind of thing the best place that we know how to put together for them to go to get it. Um, so uh, kind of just trying to do video on demand in, a, in an intelligent way. Um, and then, you know, obviously we can get into how we use that in terms of social media stuff like that later, but uh, I guess that's overview. Okay, 
One of those cities, Rochester, also contracts with us to do government meetings, government access. Okay, so we do government access for the city of Rochester, and then we do public access for 11 cities, including Rochester. Here's how we met uh, the video on demand and live stream needs of both of those. So starting out with the city of Rochester, yeah, you can go to the next one. Yeah. Okay, so the city of Rochester, they have uh, four government meetings a month, and they needed that to uh, stream live on the internet and on their cable channel, and then be able to watch it back pretty quickly. And it needed to integrate into their existing website, which they paid a whole lot of money for and looked really nice. So we use a service from Telview Corporation called Cloudcast, and I can show you what that looks like. If you go over to Safari, This is, this, is, this is what the Rochester website looks like. So this is Rochester's website. They already had the blue and green design. And then this big thing right in the middle here, this is the player that Telview gives us. And all of the green and blue and logo and all that, you can customize all that to your heart's content. And if we wanted to, we could click live. And if our Wi-Fi was reliable, we could watch the exciting programming on the Rochester government channel right now. I don't know what it is. But you can also click on some of these options right here, and you can look at city council meetings and DDA meetings and planning commission meetings uh, from now backwards to, I think, 2010 or 2009. So you can go through that. This is through Telview. If you click on the next tab, so that's Telview. That's the company. Go ahead and click on the next one. That's the interface. It makes it really easy. When we finish taping a meeting at their city council chambers, um, we create, uh, we create an MP4 or an MOV, an H.264, and we upload it via FTP to uh, their server. And this is the interface that shows us all of the meetings. We can click on any of the meetings. We can add chapters, like each of the city council meetings has an enormous agenda. And we apply a chapter marker for each one of those agendas in there. And they're very easy to edit. Like, why don't you click on chapters on the exciting city council meeting from January 23rd? Go ahead and click <laughs> Yes, that's that. Oh, it'll, it'll take a minute. But you can quickly type in as much information on each chapter that you wish. Yep, just like that. <laughs> just like that. It's okay if it doesn't matter. And then you can hit stop. Don't worry about it. Uh, and then under playlists, you can create playlists uh, for each of the meetings, like city council, DDA, uh, planning commission, news. And then each of those playlists, why don't you go back to the first tab, Thank you. Shows up right here. So you can just click on one of those. Maybe that'll show us what is in there. It'll eventually get there. Why did we go with Telview? Well, it was really simple to set up. We have a part-time person who's in charge of most of this, and they run most of it out of the Rochester government city chambers, which has um, pretty limited uh, technology and so forth. It had to be really self-contained. One, it had to be extremely controlled. We didn't have any, like, members of the public submitting video. The city council and the government have a pretty firm hand as to what they want on there. And it had to integrate with their existing website. In other words, none of these videos had to go onto YouTube or Facebook or uh, Flip or anywhere else. They just had to exist on this city's website. So the Telview player and its interface put all that together in one piece plus provided streaming. So it worked out pretty well for that. Um, for us, go back to Keynote again. And go to the next slide after that one. So, CMN TV, public access, it's a bit different. We live stream the channel 24 hours a day, and for that, we have an account with Telview and Cloudcast, the same as Rochester, but we only use the streaming component. We don't use the video on demand component. Okay? For our video on demand, all the videos uh, that we produce, whether it be staff, oh, primarily it's staff at this point. Um, we upload them either to blip.tv or directly to our YouTube account, and then those migrate to our website, cmntv.org, and our sub-site, Video On Demand site, which is created by something called Miro Community. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. So now you can go back to Safari. A lot of, a lot of command tabbing in this presentation. And that's the Blip interface. Blip.tv is a free video hosting streaming company online. Um, they claim that they don't do much for public access. I just ignore that and upload the videos anyway. It's fine. There's a one gigabyte file limit, so that does tend to limit the length of meeting or length of videos you can put up there. Um, but what's really nice is you can sync 
your account here with um, your website, if it's uh, running on a blog platform like ours is WordPress, you can sync it up with a YouTube account, with a Facebook page, with a Twitter page. So I can upload a video here and I can tell it to go to all of my other destinations. What's also nice about Blip is the presentation, offer, uh, pr presentation options it offers. We can set a custom poster frame which doesn't sound like a lot, but the ones that YouTube creates are generally hideous and ugly, so we can use this so they look really nice. And you can customize a player that uh, looks nice and blends in with your site when you embed it in your website, and we'll show you that in a moment. And there's, of course, our YouTube page. Our YouTube page, we have unlimited uh, time link, so for anything that goes, uh, uh, anything longer than probably an hour or so, it usually uh, negates the file limit size on Blip, so we throw it over here in YouTube. Plus, anything that goes to Blip goes to YouTube. YouTube's great because of visibility. Most people in the public know that it's there, and they know how to interact with it. So, on the YouTube page, we've just set up... You can scroll back down again. I'll go back to the YouTube page and scroll back down. So, just set it up as neatly as we can with building playlists to hold videos from different categories of things we've produced. On our CMN page, it's all stuff produced by staff. I haven't gotten to the producer side yet, and I'll tell you that in a moment. If you click over to the next tab, this is our website. If you scroll down, you can see here are videos embedded into our WordPress site, and these come from Blip. So this is a custom poster frame we made up with nice looking titles, and the player has some branding. Luckily, our website background is white, so we can use white. You can control all those colors and blend it in however you wish. You can change the size on that, and you can, uh, you can put a number of other options on it. It also has built-in sharing capabilities there, so people can send the video to YouTube, or I'm sorry, to Facebook and Twitter, and a thousand other giant corporations that are guarding our online privacy. So, uh, our, video, our video on demand section, click, just click over to the next tab, it should be loaded there already. This is video on demand, see, and this is our big archive. It's operated by some software called Miro Community, which is a nonprofit uh, group. I don't know the history of it. Anyway, what it does is it gives us some software that we installed on our web server, and it gives us this beautiful looking interface. These are all videos produced by staff at CMN, and we have a few that were produced by uh, members of the public. What it is, we upload a video to Blip, or to YouTube, right? Or any other video hosting service. And then we can very easily go to this site, log in in the admin, and click Submit a Video. And then we just take the URL from YouTube, or the URL from Blip, paste it in, and then it pops up here looking very nice. Why don't you scroll down again and just click on one of these videos. This was actually made by a producer. So when it pops up, you get all this, all this information is ready to go. You can see this little edit button so I can edit the title, anything I want. This was made by one of our producers. All of this interface here is already made, so you can share it along. Um, you can edit the description, and then it gives you related videos here. All of this design, all of this can be customized, but it's all pretty much done. Like, I didn't have to tell it to create that sidebar. I didn't have to tell it to pull those thumbnails. It just pulls the thumbnails from the videos. I can set custom thumbnails. I can create as many categories as I want. Why don't you go back to home for me? Did that freeze up, or did you stop it? She stopped it. She stopped it, yeah. And if you scroll down a bit, so you can see we've broken things into categories like based on stuff that CMN produces. Click on reaching out for me. And each one of these subcategories can have, you can put a custom header and a description of it. This is our reaching out series. We do videos for nonprofits. And what's really nice, we upload these videos to YouTube and Blip. Of course, we can put them here on our Miro community and on our own website. And we can say to the nonprofits who all have their own websites, hey, your video's online, in addition to the DVD we gave you, here's the embed code. Put the video on your own page, or put it on Facebook, put it wherever you want. So it's very simple to do that. So there are many different categories. Um, and so far as the public, members of the public, the producers putting videos on this, I'd very much like to see that. We've only had a few. Probably because up until very recently, our classes have not included any component uh, related to uploading your video or getting them online. We're just introducing that now. This model would say to the producer, they finish the show, they upload it to their own YouTube account or other online hosting account, and then here they would click submit a video, send us the link to that, it would go into an admin for us to approve or reject, and it would appear on the site so that they have a centralized area so that they can all come in the community and watch their videos on here. Again, yes? 